Digital Foundry is sponsored by Backtrace, the leader in crash and error reporting for game developers. Click on the link in the video description and sign up for your free trial today. Of all the next-gen launch titles, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War ranks among the best ways to see unique PS5 and Xbox Series X features with a clear benefit in how it plays. It's an often spectacular game regardless of which console you own, and developers Treyarch and Raven Software take us back to the 80s with the over-the-top set-piece design we've come to love from the series. Cold War doesn't disappoint, and the new consoles crank the action up by an extra notch by offering two new ways to play, a 120Hz mode and support for ray trace shadows. These are bullet points of the new console generation of course, and I've got to say, have a huge impact. But both modes are taxing and affect PS5 and Series X to different degrees depending on which you choose. So to discuss how these two premium consoles compare and contrast, I've got my good friend and colleague, John Linneman. How's it going? Oh, pretty good, Tom. How's it going with you? Yeah, it's been a busy uh, launch week for the next gen. I think we've all got our hands yeah. completely filled with games to cover, and uh, this one's been kind of in the running for a little while now. Obviously a big release. Yeah, I mean, while I was working on Dirt, you've been cranking in the background on this, but on the side, I've also been playing this in my free time on both Series X and PS5. And I think it looks really, really good. So there's a lot to talk about. So where do you want to start? Well, uh, first we should say that we're not going to ignore the Series S, of course. We're going to cover that as well in this video. But yeah, we should start by saying that both the premium consoles, we'll call them uh, Series X and PS5, are kind of feature matched. And Series S does not have the ray tracing and 120 hertz toggle. That is only on the more advanced consoles. So I guess we'll start from the top, PS5 and Series X with the ray tracing mode enabled. Which, by the way, let's specify this. There has been some confusion about this. I think when a lot of people see the words ray tracing, they think, oh, reflections. Uh, but there's so much more to ray tracing than that. And in this case, the developers opted to use ray traced shadows, which was also something available in last year's Call of Duty game. And I think we actually have a video on this coming up as well, which should be interesting. Uh, with Alex, of course, the, the ray tracing meister. Point is, though, is it basically allows for these very precise, very realistic, and very natural shadows. You know, you get perfect soft shadows, you get the sharper shadows of close contact hardening, all this kind of stuff. It looks really good. That is a solid mode, indeed, all around. But I think the big draw for me, weirdly enough, and is the 120 hertz mode. Right. Now, uh, I was actually surprised to see this included, and I think we should first note, there's a little bit of trickery to getting this to run on the PS5 from what I've seen. So obviously on Xbox, they do the logical thing, and you can adjust your settings from the system menu, right? You can choose 120 hertz there, and you know just enable it in the game, I suppose. Super simple. On PS5, you actually have to go into the system settings and find the part where you choose your preference between performance or quality modes. This has nothing to do with the game specifically, it's literally just a preference thing, but for some reason, similar to widescreen in um, Criterion games on PlayStation 2 where you actually had to set widescreen in the system OS, which is the <laughs> only game that I know of that did that, you have to choose the performance mode here. When you do that and you go back into Call of Duty and your TV supports 120Hz mode, you will get that mode. And if you go in the options, and this is what's especially confusing, it will still be grayed out, but it'll say enabled. Which is weird, isn't it? It's weird, but that's what it's doing. So that hopefully that helps some people with the confusion on how to enable that. Yeah, if you're wondering why it's grayed out, go back a level to the system menus um, and you'll be sorted. Yeah, I, I much prefer the Xbox approach uh, when it comes to this stuff. You know, if we're doing it through the system menus, uh, having it just labeled as 120 hertz makes a lot more sense. But I think in future, I'd much rather it in-game, you know, just so it's very clear. The functionality is there, and I think uh, they're both even on that in that re regard. You played campaign, right, with 120 hertz? I did. Again, I was surprised to see this in the full campaign because, honestly, this is a beautiful game. I mean, for a launch Call of Duty, you know, we looked at Ghosts last gen. It's not a great looking game, a way to start the, the generation, but this, this looks really good. Good materials, good effects, good post-processing. It's a really beautiful game on all platforms. And the 120 hertz mode is actually super impressive and really solid. We'll get more to this in the performance, but whether you're playing it on Series X or PS5, you're going to have a really good time with this. 
if you have the display that can support it, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's uh, obviously the resolution side of things, which we should touch on no matter which way you play. The game looks awesome. It looks really well presented, and there's a reconstruction going on uh, regardless of mode. But yes, on the PS5 and Series X in the ray tracing mode, you've got a target of 4K, 3840x2160, but that can go down to... 1800p though we have noticed like the horizontal axis kind of chops in half sometimes when things are really taxing and uh, that means you get kind of maybe a 1920 by 1800 as the lowest yeah it's interesting the way they do that sort of horizontal scaling yeah and i think it, it's pretty effective overall the image quality in general is is solid in this game yeah but this is like something we've seen in previous treyarch games i think uh, more typically that's true. I can't say I've ever really noticed an issue. I think there's temporal anti-aliasing to help it along and blend those frames, but yeah, it's not an issue. Headsets on. Uh, on the Series S, there is a 1440p max bounce, 2560 by 1440. Okay, so that actually is, that's hitting what Microsoft was talking about. That's good. It's dynamic res as well, going down to 1200p on Series S, uh, with a similar sort of cut to the horizontal axis independently. But yeah, that's a, a very typical Treyarch engine uh, approach to dynamic res that we've seen in previous games. Okay, so we have the resolution for the ray tracing mode, which is key, and then we also know how Series S is faring, which is pretty good. Uh, what about 120 hertz? Because I haven't actually pixel counted this myself, um, but looking at the screen, it does take a noticeable image quality hit, but not so much that I don't think it's still worth using. It, in fact, it looks a lot better than I would have expected for a 120 hertz game like this. So what did you get? In the end, it comes to about 1200p typically. Um, I've not recorded many results above that. It's very possible, but so far it's like 1200p. And I've seen it drop to about 1080p, like in the meeting room. You know, you can work around the temporal anti-aliasing to get a good lock on the resolution. And it's just a perfect stair-step match for a 1080p grid. That's also true. That's worth pointing out is like, uh, it is really hard to pixel count these 120 hertz modes. At least in my setup, I can't capture 1440p or anything like that. So it has to be 1080p 120. Yeah, same here. So it's uh, it basically comes down to assessing a super sampled image, if you like. So if it's running above 1080p. Yeah, which we've, we've done before. And that's, that is a little bit tricky, but it does give you an idea. Okay, so let's talk about the actual differences between the consoles then. From what I've seen going between them both, they seem to be pretty much identical. Yeah, like um, Series X and PS5 really don't have much at all between them. There's a few like anomalies, I guess. Like you'll see ground textures positioned a little differently. You'll see grass distributed a little differently, but it's that usual thing of, okay, it might be randomized. There's not a clear lock on a, a absolute difference or advantage it all leans on the resolution which makes sense to me i think it makes development a lot easier for them to uh, lock on a, a matching feature set and then just work leave it up to the dynamic res to make sure the gpu doesn't buckle too much but on those two it's not there's not much between them it's with series s that things are definitely the the gap widens quite significantly that kind of makes sense then so we have pretty high resolutions on the series s but uh, so what kind of details? I haven't actually played it on here yet. Well, the ray tracing is huge. Uh, we've gone into this, but it's just, it's such a difference. And uh, not having that kind of makes air levels look a bit bare in some ways, like just having these pre-baked shadows across terrain. It doesn't quite match up to it, but it's a very typical Call of Duty look for consoles. It's just something we saw like last gen quite often. So it does feel like the promise of Series S as the 1440p variant of the 4K experience on Series X isn't quite true here. It feels like it's just missing that feature and uh, to me that's a bit of a shame and likewise for the 120 hertz mode. Uh, and there are a few other like small differences on Series S like the grass density is dropped in some scenes like the, uh, the Vietnam level. Uh, you walk down this kind of route towards the helicopter and it's uh, there's some parts where there's a, a more visible cutback in detail and also per object motion blur looks to be using a different setting at least on series s but overall it holds together really well you're in the clear we'll copy that part the game looks awesome on series x and ps5 i'd say but i guess the big question here then is performance and i spent most of my time in the 120 mode and i played through 
uh, several missions on both systems and found them to be very smooth overall, with the exception of one scene with the helicopter, which I'm sure we'll talk about. For most people, I guess 60 hertz is the way that they'll be playing for now, or the majority of people. There's been um, you know, a fair few games coming out recently where it's been like a PS5 advantage in performance for whatever reason, but this game shows it Series X pulling quite a ways ahead in some points. We should qualify that 95% of the time, it's, you know, perfect 60. It's like that Call of Duty experience you'd expect in, in the ray tracing mode. You know, if you want to polish that off and uh, make it 100%, you know, it's it just turn the ray tracing off. But it works so well with ray tracing on, yeah, I'd, I'd really recommend leaving it there. I kind of agree. Like, if, if you're actually getting a frame rate that's this stable, close to 60 most of the time, on both these machines with ray trace shadows, it's a really good sign for what's to come. That's to say, when it does drop, and there are moments like in the set piece where you're kind of um, chasing this plane with the radio-controlled car, uh, there's this massive drop on PS5, and it's not there on Series X if we switch to that. And there's another scene when um, in Russia there's this sort of complex, and you're running through it while being fired at, and PS5 drops to like 40 FPS, and it's not an issue at all on Series X. So there are set piece moments where it really obviously chugs on PS5. Um, not a big issue as soon as you turn and uh, find you know people to shoot. It's regular gameplay. PS5 is absolutely fine, but there is select moments where yeah that difference, it really shows Series X in a better light. So basically then, with ray tracing on, they're both very stable, but it's a little more stable on Series X. And if you play it without ray tracing, they're both pretty much like 99.9% .9 stable. Uh, what about Series S then? Series S, obviously no ray tracing. I found the drops are in very different spots. It's very good, 60 FPS, like again, majority of the time. There's some small drops into the 50s during that kind of helicopter shootout uh, where you're kind of panning across that uh, village in Vietnam. And there's uh, some other moments where, yeah, there's some tearing. There's adaptive V-Sync on every console, which means tearing is introduced along with the, the drops. But overall, it does really well. It holds up very well. Uh, but obviously, the load is very different. It's a very different uh, tax on the system hardware. I guess the good news, though, is if you're on Xbox, again, I want to mention it here once more. If you have a variable refresh rate display, uh, I can confirm that it takes care of dips. Although in that case, I was testing the 120 mode, but I know that it, VRR also works beautifully in 60 hertz. So um, 120 hertz is the next big one. And I think this is where both of us feel a lot more excited. Uh, obviously, you've got to have the right TV for it. And uh, ideally, HDMI 2.1 support on your TV to get the full range of the resolutions uh, this game's pushing out above 1080p. As you can see from the graph here, it actually runs extremely well overall. Like, really well overall. I, I was... I didn't expect it to be as smooth as it is. And in fact, after, like, however many missions I went through, and I think you have footage here, is, is there's just that one part in the one mission with the helicopter where there's there's some dips but otherwise i found that both consoles were really smooth i actually played through all of this on both xbox and ps5 and i found that on ps5 you could notice the tearing and slow down in the beginning of the helicopter mission uh, and on xbox i played it with vrr and i didn't actually really notice any of those issues uh, but then i looked at your data and it tells an interesting story yeah because without vrr well we should say it's between 100 and 120 fps which you know, perceptibly isn't going to be a big difference. I think the, the metrics at the top there exaggerate in some sense, uh, you know, how extreme that feeling is. You know, it's not 60 FPS, uh, sub 60 FPS drops or anything. It's 120 down to 100. The strange thing is we know ray tracing at 60 FPS works better on Series X, but as you can see here, PS5 takes the lead in the 120 Hertz mode. No clear reason why this is. Like the resolution bounds on both modes are, you know, perceptibly the same, and the feature set visually are the same. But yeah, PS5 seems to be, when it's pushed, really stressed in this uh, set piece. It is the PS5 that takes a lead, and I've seen this a couple of times in uh, multiple tests. But it's again worth stressing that a lot of the campaign runs perfectly at 120, and likewise the multiplayer mode, which I played a lot of, just feels so wonderfully optimized for 120 on both consoles. So it's 
you know, it's a complete non-issue, I think, especially if you've got VR enabled on Series X. No, I mean, honestly, whatever drops occur on either machine, it's kind of negligible in the face of what you get and how, like, it's actually more stable than your usual Call of Duty campaign even. Like, I can't believe how well it hits 120 hertz on these machines. Again, it's just, just about every mission is basically perfect. So by and large, I mean, performance is, is good in this game, and I think the team did an excellent job all around. The frame rate targets are, are met most of the time. It feels really nice and polished on all machines. And I guess one thing we should also mention is that they added, they, they take advantage of the DualSense controller, uh, specifically on PS5, so you actually get tension in the triggers, which I think is really interesting. I, I think So I suspect that multiplayer folks are probably going to want to turn it off because it, it does change the feel. I think it's really cool, though, for other modes and I, I would probably leave it on because it's cool but again it does affect how fast you can press the trigger because what they do is you know each trigger on, on a weapon is modified in such a way so like a pistol like as you pull the trigger you'll feel tension right up until a certain point and then it clicks in suddenly with force you know what I mean like it's like it gives way like like the spring gives in or something there's kind of a pinch point Exactly, there's a pinch point. That's a good way to put it. I noticed the difference when I moved back to Series X. I'm like, oh, it's missing. <laughs> That's how much I kind of end up missing it sometimes. But for multiplayer, I agree. It's like, I don't need it there. It's, it's, it's more of a, a fun thing for campaign. So I think that's pretty much it then. We've talked about the performance, image quality, you know, we've kind of gushed a little bit about the visuals. I, it's really a great looking game. I, I was really impressed with that as well. And the campaign itself, you know, it has its flaws, but I find it, it was made by Raven Software, by the way, which is really interesting. Big fan of their classic works. But it has some stuff you don't usually see in Call of Duty, like it has like some dialogue trees, like sneaking missions, and just kind of a different flow to it. So I kind of appreciate what they're trying to do there. But yeah, overall, it's a pretty solid package. It really looks great. It runs super well. Loads of red barrels conveniently placed next to all the enemies, <laughs> which I love. Loads of red barrels, absolutely. Yeah, I've, I've been a big fan of it, and I've, I think it's one of the, the most exciting games that launched for me. We went into this generation, with, you know, expecting 120 hertz and ray tracing, even if it's not reflections. It's exciting to see, you know, the fulfillment of that promise. But right, so that'll do for today then. Um, thank you so much, John, for joining me. Of course, Tom, anytime. And uh, we'll do the usual wrap up here. If you did like this video, feel free to like or subscribe to our channel. And as always, ring the bell to get notifications as any new video lands. Uh, to get in touch with John and myself, just use Twitter as always. And to get this video at high quality, we've got a patron set up just for you. But from the both of us, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next one. Don't lose players to game errors and crashes. Instability will happen throughout the game development cycle during playtesting, beta cycles, or after you've released. Backtrace was developed to automate the capture and analysis of crashes, hangs, and non-fatal errors across PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, PC, Mac, Stadia, and more. Our unique data platform allows you to index anything, integrate with Jira, Slack, Discord, and run analytic workloads to better prioritize and understand your game stability. Many of the industry's AAA studios depend on Backtrace. You should too. Click on the link in the video description and sign up for your free trial today.